Hey folks, uh, welcome to another day, another hands-on. This here is LG's V60 ThinQ 5G. This is their new flagship for this year. And as you can see, it is very, very, very shiny. This also comes with a dual screen accessory, which I will show you in a second, because it wouldn't be an LG phone without a dual screen. So as you can see, this is a 1080p OLED panel. It's 6.8 inches, which is large. And it's got, as you can see here, a tiny little notch for the front facing camera. This is just a teardrop notch. There's a 10 megapixel f over 1.9 front facing camera in there. So 1080p OLED, uh, 6.8 inch, very little bezel, pretty much what you'd expect from a modern flagship, but it's uh, feeling pretty decent. Of course, it's meant to be used as a dual screen device, at which point it will get a little bulk here. What's interesting about it is the guts 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is quite a bit, and a Snapdragon 865 with an X55 5G modem. So depending on which carrier you're on, you're gonna get millimeter wave support or sub six support, but not both. So keep that in mind if you wanna future-proof things. Eight gigs of RAM, 120 gigs of storage is the, kind of the, the main spec. There's really only one option right now. It supports micro SD cards up to two terabytes, which is cool. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about the cameras in a second, but uh, before I do, let me walk you through some of the things on the edges. On the left-hand side, you've got a power lock key, and on the bottom, a headphone jack. Yes, that's right. Headphone jack, USB Type-C, and a speaker with a primary microphone. Now, this has four microphones total. I'm not gonna find them all, I think, but you get the idea. Uh, the idea here is to do basically audio zoom. They call it sound bouquet. There is a dedicated Google Assistant button, volume rocker, and then you see one of the mics here. And on top here, SIM slot and another mic. There's a fourth mic somewhere, it might be hidden in the back. Let's talk about cameras real quick. So it's kind of a little puzzling, but there's only three cameras in the back here. And they're not the three cameras you'd expect. There's a 64 megapixel main sensor. It's uh, f over 1.8. Of course, it pixel bins four to one, so you get 1.6 micron final pixels. You can also shoot at 64 megapixels if you want. It does support 8K video at 24 frames per second, very similar to the S20. And then uh, the second camera is a 13 megapixel f over 1.9 ultra wide. And uh, the third camera is not what you'd expect. It is not a telephoto. It is a time of flight camera used for some depth sensing and 3D effects. The reasoning here is that the telephoto is basically achieved by doing a 2x crop zoom on the main sensor because it's got large amounts of pixels and it's got OIS on the main pixels and a really high quality lens, they say. So that should alleviate the need for a dedicated telephoto. That's assuming you don't want to zoom much more than say three or four times. But that's what you get with this phone. Uh, in terms of price, we don't have any specific details right now, but it should be less than the competition's entry level flagship cost so you can deduct what you want out of that other things that i noticed is that there's also a quad dac lg's very famous super high quality audio implementation as you can see it's picking up fingerprints as i'm using it and uh, yeah there's really not too much to talk about here we're running android 10 as you'd expect everything is pretty much where you want it by default there's no app tray you have to turn that on very annoying but hey that's how it is when you skin Android. Basically, you're looking at a pretty reasonable flagship overall with some good features. Uh, HDR10 support across the board for video and for the display, 10 plus to be specific. Water resistance, wireless charging. To top off that 5,000 milliamp hour battery, you have a, an entire 25 watt of fast charging support with uh, quick charge four, so that's pretty cool. So let me show you really quickly, I've walked you through the edges and everything else, but let me walk you through the case because this is a usual thing with the LG, they have a case. So you slide the phone in like this by connecting the USB-C port and you push it in and now you have a dual display device. So you get a little uh, outer display here, OLED, same thing as the LG G8X I showed you a while back. And when we open it, there we go, two displays. So put YouTube on here and say, put the messaging app on here so you can message your friends what watching videos. And then, you know, here you go, you can swap screens, that sort of thing. Uh, you can turn off the dual display, you know, etc. So 
It's, it's pretty much the same implementation as what uh, LG gave us last year. And you get, you know, double the buttons down here if you're not using gestures to do the controlling of the apps. There is a teardrop notch as well on here. I'm not sure if you can see it. It is up here. It doesn't do anything. There's no camera. So that's the same as the G8X ThinQ was last year. I'm just going to show you quickly what it looks like around the edges with the case on. You got a replication of the Google Assistant button and volume rocker, a little recessed hole for the headphone jack. That's still the same problem as before, though. You need, uh, you need a cord that's not too thick. Um, there's also this magnetic charge connector on the case, which was the same as last time with the G8X. Power lock key is exposed when in the case, so you don't need to replicate that. And there you go, the LG V60 Thank You 5G. Stay tuned for more videos. Please like, subscribe, hit the little notification bell below, comment below, and remember, this is supplements to the Mobile Tech Podcast at mobiletechpodcast.com. We're on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Pocket Cast and Spotify. So please join us there to hear my thoughts on this device once it's released and I get a device to, uh, to review. So that's it, folks, and cheers for now.